Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. My name is Art Pettit, and the title of my presentation is Printers, the Other Output Device. Now, you may look at that title and say, what the heck do you mean by the other output device? And so to get back to that, we're going to go kind of back to the beginnings of hardware. And there's four basic functions that define a computer, what, uh, what processes you need to uh, create a computer. Anybody remember what those are? Especially for my group that's just gone through this not too long ago. And there we go. Input, output, processing, and memory. Those are the four basic functions. And what's the uh, current uh, primary output device? Your monitor, right? Sure, it's something you can visually look at. Hasn't always been that way. Uh, monitors like we know them as CRT to now LEDs and LCDs uh, only came about about 1964. But we know from the history of computers, computers started back in the late 40s, even earlier than that. And I'll talk about that a little more in my presentation. Anyway, what I'm going to do is break this down into about five sections. First, the history of printers as they relate to computers, the types of printers, connections, uh, and also which includes cables and ports and things like that, the installation of printers, and the upkeep and maintenance of printers. These are going to be, uh, we're not going to go real super in-depth into anything here. That takes far too long than we have time to do today. So, But we're going to give you kind of a quick brief overview. And uh, most of this will be uh, I have a refresh for a lot of folks in here. Some of them it'll maybe hopefully give you some new stuff. I found some new stuff out when I was uh, doing my research to do this presentation. So on to the history of computers. I have to put on my, my glasses and make sure I can read everything right. Okay, so actually computers date back to far before the electronics age that we think of in the 40s and 19, late 1940s, early 1950s first really electronic computers came back. Uh, back in the mid-19th century, somewhere around 1838, a fellow by the name of Charles Babbage, he wasn't too uh, happy about the way business was being carried out and doing calculations for banks and large businesses at that time. It was all done by hand, a lot of problems with math and all, and he developed what he called the difference engine. This was an early analog computer. A bunch of gears and cogs, you hand cranked it, and it would do uh, some pretty sophisticated calculations. He figured out real quick on that it was fine for that computer, that, that analog computer, to do the calculations, and that got it right. But then there was a similar problem of people. They would have to transport or pose that data uh, onto some kind of paper medium at that time. There was no uh, sophisticated electronics or anything like that to work with. So he also developed a printer for his. Uh, difference engine. Now, whether that actually was ever constructed or not, I didn't find out in my research. However, uh, back in uh, 1990, uh, the British Museum, along with, I think it was Oxford University, they actually went ahead and built from his plans this difference engine and the printer. That's kind of a, the only picture I could find of it from the BBC uh, website about that uh, device, building of that device. So. Anyway, it was a fairly large, sophisticated machine, but it could print multiple copies. It was actually a typeset kind of printer. The next uh, step forward came in about 1938. A fellow by the name of Chester Carlson developed electrophotography. Now, this wasn't a printer in and of itself, but it was a significant uh, advancement for what would later become Xerox copying and the laser printer, the very basis for all that. So that was back in 1938. 1953 saw the first high-speed printer for computers as we know it, electronic computers. Uh, it was actually developed by Remington Rand. They were also a big computer manufacturer in the early 50s. Uh, they were working, uh, competing against IBM. And they actually built the Univac computer, one of the first early big commercially successful computers. Um, they developed a line printer for that computer um, entitled the Uniprinter. And that's a picture of it up there. Uh, no small printer this was. This, uh, you had to take the actual metallic tape off the Univac, put it into the machine, it would process it, and eventually you'd get a printout of the uh, either letters or numbers that you were looking for. All the data would be printed out on this line printer. 
1954, Remington Rand actually connected that uh, unit printer directly to the Univac. So that was the first of its kind. And in 1955, IBM, not to be uh, outdone, they started make, working on a wire matrix type printer, which eventually became our dot matrix printers uh, much later on. We'll talk about that a little more later. So then things were fairly static. There were some other printers, not much information on when they were constructed uh, until about 1970. And then a company called Centronics, they were actually in the printer business along with other uh, digital equipment and digital equipment corporation. 1970, they both introduced a dot matrix impact printer. Uh, the unique thing about the Centronics was it was the first to have a parallel interface. Prior to that, everything was serial. From 1970 on, they pretty much all went to parallel um, interfaces. In 1972, Diablo Company, they produced the first daisy wheel printer. We'll discuss that technology a little more in detail later. And then back in 1975, IBM finally released its first uh, laser printer, trying to beat out the Xerox company. The problem was, it was not a very good product. A lot of problems with smudging and things like that. And it didn't go well, real well for them. In 1977, Xerox produced a much better printer, and that was very commercially successful. Still, these were all, that's a picture of IBM's uh, 3800 laser printer, the very first laser printer. But not very commercially successful, I would say. Uh, still for mainframe type computers, nothing like the size we would see in a home office these days or office even. Uh, 1984, Hewitt Packard releases the first inkjet printer called the Thinkjet, and we still got Thinkjets around to this very day. So, so that's kind of the basic history. There were some other printer technologies in there. Uh, We'll talk about a little bit more. Couldn't really find much of a history on them. Um, thermal printers were definitely been around for a long time, but uh, we couldn't get much on them. So that's our basic history of, com of computers and printers. So now we'll go on to the various types of printers. It's most easy to characterize them by the way they uh, create the image. There's uh, thermal printers, there's impact printers, including line printers, daisy whale well printers, and dot matrix printers inkjet printers, laser printers, dye sublimation printers, plotters, a couple other types that are less common around. I'm not going to get into those a whole lot. So we'll start off first with the thermal printers. Two types of technology, direct thermal, where you actually use a little bit of heat or electric current that passes uh, or works on a thermally sensitive paper. Uh, this kind of technology was uh, used in early uh, GPR applications. I actually had the chance to use one of these when I was a geologist uh, maybe 10, 15 years ago. We had a uh, thermal, direct thermal printer. It looked very similar to this one, which was used for doing seafloor studies at that time. But we used them down in Florida to look for sinkholes buried under sand. So big, noisy, messy, nasty units they were. <laughs> When you ran one, if you were near it, you'd get black dust all over you and you'd in, your, in your hair and everything else. Not a very clean process. Uh, during the 70s, they kind of transferred over to the uh, transfer thermal, thermal transfer, which uh, actually uses a sheet of black kind of plastic material and by heat fuses the images to that plain paper. Next type of printer uh, we'll talk about is impact printers. Impact printers include uh, line printers, daisy wheel, and dot matrix. Line printers generally have a drum with a whole bunch of letters around it, and it spins around to find the right characters to print on a line. They print long lines. These are uh, very early printers, not seen anymore today. Daisy wheel printers, they actually have a wheel. That's the lowest picture you hear. That's a daisy wheel. This was a big improvement in a certain way from a typewriter type because it was removable and you could change fonts that way. But basically any document would pretty much have to have the same font for the entire document because it was a fairly tedious task to remove a printer or the daisy wheel and put on a new one. And then eventually we got to uh, dot matrix printers. These were very common and still in common use today in, uh, business environment, not at home, uh, but uh, basic dot matrices use a series of pins to create the image, pressed through a uh, ribbon, 
and depending on the amount of pins in the head of the data, the data the dot matrix crater, you can get uh, nine pins, and we'll get you about 72 dots per inch, and up to 24 pins, got to 360 dots per inch. They actually got up to 48 uh, pins in the head, but they weren't really used very much. 24 was a typical. Um, my very first printer back in probably about 1996 was an old uh, dot matrix printer. And some of these even came out, most of this stuff before them was black and white. Some of these daisy wheel or dot matrix printers actually came out in tri-color ribbon so you could create color characters. And still mostly daisy wheels and lines were strictly uh, character based. Uh, letters and numbers, punctuation, dot matrixes, you could actually do some, some good graphic or rough graphics anyway, they weren't real fine. Should have asked how many people do have a printer attached to their computer back home. Yeah, a few. Okay, how many use uh, dot? Um, how many use an uh, inkjet type technology? Most of them. Anybody got a laser printer? Okay, a couple of those out there. Anybody got any other technologies on their, their home stuff they use? Now, pretty much lasers and inkjets are everything. So we'll get into inkjet printers. Came about by HP back in 1994 or 84, and they actually tie, spray a tiny uh, spray pattern of ink into the paper, either by one of two mechanisms, either by heating the ink or by using a diaphragm. These are probably the most common printers you'll find today in most homes and home and small offices. Uh, due to the relative uh, inexpense. Some larger printer units are fairly good color units. You can actually get near photo quality out of these as opposed to uh, uh, some of the other technologies, near photo quality. Move on. Laser printers. Anybody believe that's the first laser printer? <laughs> nah. <laughs> actually, this, this I was supposed to do on April Fool's Day, so this was part of my kind of April Fool's gags. Uh, I decided to leave it in because actually I came upon this when I was doing a search on the internet and they came up with the first laser printer on it and it's like, hmm, I think somebody's pulling our legs here. Uh, but it's a good thing, uh, kind of a good point that you really don't want to uh, believe everything you see on the internet. <laughs> so now get the laser printers, like I say, developed first by IBM and later by Xerox mostly uh, used in small office and big large office type environments. High quality digital printing requires a drum then electrically is charged. Uh, the paper is and the, uh, it's passed by a positive charge drum. And I see. Okay. The drum is uh, negatively high charged. The laser beam actually removes that negative charge making neutral areas, the areas that don't get printed. The paper passes by um, a positively charged drum which positively charges the paper and attracts the ink that's on the negative charged drum to it. Then they run through a fuser assembly that actually fuses the uh, toner to the uh, paper. And that's the basic of the technology. Uh, older uh, lasers which are still out there in the office, uh, but I need something similar to that. That's what I have in my office. Uh, they can do a lot of things, collating, and even stapling print pages. They usually have a separate uh, toner and fuser and all that together. These smaller compact ones like you see around, they're all included. You can get colored laser printers which can do all three. These two ones have individual, each color, magenta, yellow, and cyan, all have different colored uh, toner cartridges along with fusers and all that stuff. Quickly, we'll go through uh, dye sublimation. Basically, here it's another sheet of plastic. Uh, this time, it's uh, the plastic is multicolored, so you can get very high color uh, color images. These are typically used for photocopiers. Uh, some of them are also in large format for doing pictures, like the uh, sign at the back of our auditorium here. But usually, those are done on large. Plotter type uh, dye sublimation printers. And the last kind of printer I'm going to talk about is plotters. Now, plotters 
are kind of a hybrid in there. Plotters are large score maps. They uh, can be anywhere from about 24 to 48 inch wide pieces of paper. Some of them are even bigger than that, but that's your standard that's found in most uh, business offices. They can be uh, pen driven. The early ones were generally pen. They had 20 different color pens used to do CAD drawings and architectural drawings and drafting types of work. Other ones now are inkjet based, just like this uh, HP Design Jet. This is actually the one I stacked out for my company. We purchased it relatively inexpensive, uh, about $1,000 or so. Huge ink reservoirs that lasted us for many, many years, worked real well for when we print out topographic maps and such. So, of all the printers out there, the uh, inkjet or inkjets are the most common. I have one up here. Actually, I have one. Here we're going to pass it around real quick. It's so small and portable. This was my very first inkjet printer, so please don't drop it. <laughs> it still works. You'll notice inside there, you can take and open it up and look at it. There's only one place for an ink cartridge. So you can either run it in black mode, or you can take the cartridge out of the side. It's a tricolor, put it inside, and then you can do color cartridges. That's probably a mid to late 19, uh, 1990s really good version. And while we're doing that, let's say, especially the inkjets and a lot of the lasers too have become multi-function. I have one here. This can not only uh, print from a computer, it has its own little brains inside. It itself is a computer. It has. Uh, input, it has memory, it has output, it even has a little LCD here, and it's got a processor inside. So it can do all the basic functions of a computer, and it doesn't even need a computer to work to do a lot of that. It can process film. So I'm going to take a picture of everybody here. All right, we got you back there. <laughs> that was showing off. All we have to do is take the little card out of here, put it in the slot. It recognizes it's got a card inside that says view and print. No way you can actually see, but there's your picture. Got a nice picture of my dog. I mean, yeah, we'll print your picture. And it's got four by six photo paper. Unfortunately, I do not have photo ink. I wasn't willing to spend that much money on this. I had to go with some cheap off-brand to get this thing running, but... And a few button presses, and off it goes. It's printing a color photograph. We'll pass that down. And we'll move ahead. Ports, connectors, and cables. As I said, prior to 1970, pretty much all communication between computers and printers was by a serial port. Anybody want to tell me what serial port communication means? One bit at a time, right? So it was pretty darn slow. Pretty darn slow. Beginning in 1970, Centronics came out with the first parallel port. And we still call it a Centronics port. See, and you see it matches up uh, with the port on the bottom of that printer, or the back of that printer. And they are still in use today for many printers, especially the older ones that are still out there, like the dot matrixes. About 1996, USB came into prevalence. Basically, two type. Serial, parallel, and USB. Type A connectors, which attach to the computer. Type B computer, uh, type B USB, uh, which connects to the back of the printer. Let's see. Oh, that's absolutely terrible. <laughs> but but we do get 1.0, 2.0, and 3.0 compliant USB devices on.
besides the wired serial parallel and uh, USB, we can also do it wirelessly or networked uh, with Ethernet and Wi Fi. Uh, this is a barcode printer, and uh, these are typical of what I see in my work in uh, Home Depot. We have these all over the place, they're all wireless. So we've got Wi Fi throughout the whole building. We carry around little cell phones, little phones in our hands. And you can actually print uh, directly from that to get a barcode to put on products and on bins and such. This one you can see is the, the Max for uh, wire and wireless. It's got Wi-Fi, RJ45 jacks, parallel jacks, Intronics jacks, USB. Everything you can think of is in there. Final thing we'll discuss today is some installation. How many people uh, connect their computers directly, or their printers directly to their computer? Okay, quite a few. Anybody have it uh, done as a wired network? Okay, is it direct or indirect? Direct? Indirect. Indirect, okay. Usually if you're sharing, sorry. If you're sharing you know, a network, that's the common way in you know, most home and small office environments to do it. Although a lot of them are networked. I used to network mine for my work all the time. So, uh, First we'll talk about networks. I found this video that I really liked. It shows actually a Windows 8 installation and what's I liked about it mostly was that once you get into it, you'll find out it's exactly the same as Vista and Windows 7. So. Hey there everyone, this is Ryan Pearson, aka The Frugal Geek with another Windows 8 tip. If you want to install a networked printer to your Windows 8 PC, the process of doing so is actually quite straightforward. First thing you'll need to do is access the control panel. Now you can do this through a hotkey combination or if you're lazy like myself, you can simply go to the desktop, move your mouse to the lower left corner and right click. And that will bring up a list of administrative features that you can take advantage of. For example, control panel. Just give that a left click, bam. That brings up the control panel, it's ready for you. In order to install this printer, you'll need to go to the device and printers menu. This is accessible right here under Hardware and Sound. Just click View Devices and Printers. And you'll be met with a list of devices that have been attached to your PC in one way or another. Some of them are software-based, some of them are hardware. In this case, we see two printers here. Neither one of them are actually physical printers. But there is a printer on my network I would like to install. In order to install it, I just need to hit Add a Printer in the upper left area of the screen. I'll hit that. And you see right here, it found a printer on my network. It has a local IP, which means that it is in fact attached to my network and not somewhere out in the abyss waiting to be connected. Okay, so it's an ML2525W series from Samsung. That's how it's identifying itself. And this is important later on, I'll show you why. Just go ahead and give that a left click so that it's highlighted. And right down here, you'll want to hit the next button. At this point, it did not detect a driver. Sometimes it will, but sometimes it won't. You'll need to either pick your driver through this list here, or you'll want to hit Windows Update. Windows Update will solve the problem for you most of the time. It'll automatically detect the driver and download it. Sometimes it won't, and you'll need to insert a disk from the manufacturer. This is usually included in the box with the printer. If you don't have the disk, you can download the drivers from the manufacturer and install them before going through this whole rigmarole. For me, I believe my Samsung printer is listed in the default list. It is an ML2525W, and there it is. I have clicked that with a left click, and I'm going to hit Next. Okay, it's going to say, you already have a driver installed. This does not come up for everyone. Sometimes you don't have the driver installed already. I do, so I'm going to take the recommended course of action and just hit Next. Otherwise, you can say replace the current driver, and it will replace your driver with the driver found in Windows Update. All right, I'm going to hit Next, and now I can name the printer. I'm going to name this printer my printer, just because. And <laughs> this will come up whenever it says, which printer would you like to print with? You'll say my printer. Okay, I'm going to hit Next, and it will ask, do you want to share the printer on the network, 
or do you not want to share the printer? Not sharing the printer does not mean nobody else on the network can attach to the printer. The printer's already on the network being shared, so you don't need to extend the favor by basically creating a duplicate printer on your network. So don't share the printer if it's already networked. You don't need to. Okay, you've successfully added the printer. You can choose the print test page or hit finish and check to make sure that your printer is set as default. If you want to set it as default, just right click and set as default printer. You'll see this little green check whenever it is your default. That's it, I've installed the printer and I'm ready to go. If you have any questions about Windows 8 processes or policies or what have you, please leave them in the comment section below and we'll get to them as soon as we can. For now, I'm Ryan Pearson and I'm out. Okay, so that's how to, uh, my quick on how to install a network in uh, Windows uh, 8, and it's a very similar process in Windows 7 or Vista. Uh, the other next ones will be direct print uh, direct connections, using a USB or a parallel port, basically uh, follow the manufacturer's directions, this usually comes with the printer. Uh, you can install the, uh, saw for USB, install the uh, Software and the drivers first, at least the drivers first, then connect the printer. A lot of times, then you'll uh, ask to install the software. As a shared printer, you basically follow the same thing as a direct, and then you go into network uh, sharing, file and print sharing, and share your printer with uh, the rest of your network. Maintenance and repair is basically. Uh, we're going to do a quick on that one. Read the manuals, right? They all come with them. Uh, when I lived and worked uh, with uh, my company, uh, doing a little bit of IT work for them, besides being a geologist, I lived by the manual for that, especially for the laser printers and stuff. They had to be cleaned periodically. Just read your uh, manual. Routine maintenance schedules are in there, how to clean it, what to use, don't use what they don't tell you to use, alcohol and stuff in the wrong place can really kill a printer quick. Yeah. Make sure you dispose of ink and toner properly. Uh, they are toxic and nasty and they also generally have recyclable materials in them so we want to be environmentally friendly and uh, dispose of our ink and toner cartridges. When you have problems, the basics go into it. Cables, connections, configuration. Most of these printers have a uh, utilities based in them that you can use inkjets especially for cleaning nozzles, aligning them, uh, things like that. So you use the printer utilities that come along with it. So to summarize my uh, discussion this morning, printers have been associated with computers from the very beginning, even prior to the monitor. The monitor as we know it really didn't come about until about 1964. Prior to that, there was a monitor on computers, it's called a monitor station, that's where we get the name monitor from, but it was just a series of lights that engineers would use to keep track of what was going on in the computer. So the nice thing about printers and why I like them is the uh, other output devices that they provide you a hard copy of anything that you're looking at, whether that's an image, uh, a printer, uh, a data that you're working with, uh, presentation, you know, handouts, various things that we do. Uh, the my primary uh, types of printers in use today are going to be uh, inkjets and lasers in the small home office. Dot matrices are typically used in business environments where they need to make co car uh, carbon copies. Dye sublimations are still in use uh, fairly prevalently, especially in graphics areas where they want high quality printing, but, uh, you know, photo quality printing. Printers can be connected either by wire, serial, or mostly parallel and USB, uh, also by Ethernet, and then also wirelessly. And the key to installation, maintenance, and repair is the use of the manufacturer's documentation. You know, they all provide it, so, or we can go online and look for it and then follow your three seats of cables, connectors, and configuration. And that's about all for my presentation today. Anybody have any questions? Uh, is it true that they have a 3D printer now? Yes, they do. Um, I didn't get into that. Yeah, I'm a little...
hesitant about calling that a real printer, though it uses the same technology. It's almost to me like a manufacturing process. But <laughs> that's why I didn't go into it. But they're certainly out there. In fact, we just looked at the they were they they print with the plastics, quote print with plastics, and they also do it with metal now. Even, so. Anything else? Okay, I appreciate your staying there, listening to me, and you have a good day.